In this video, I'm going to explain to you how billionaires make decisions. And I got this after listening to my billionaire mentor. Now, those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Bashar Katu, and I own BJK University, which is an online education company that teaches people just like yourself how to start and scale their own online businesses. Now, if this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and then do me a favor and destroy that thumbs up button. It truly helps us in the algorithm. Now, one thing that I realized after studying billionaire, uh, billionaires in the world, and one thing that kept on coming back to me was their decision-making process. You see, one thing that we are always taught that you should sleep on it. You should, you know, think about it. You should take your time to make a decision. And when you're starting out in your journey, in your career, when you're trying to accomplish things, it's all about go, 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 go. So you have to kind of remove that thought out of your mind of, I need to sleep on it. I need to think about it. I need to, you know, kind of decide on that, right? And what I'm going to tell you right now and share with you in this video, it, ha it cannot be taken for a grand assault because you need to make sure that you are, you know, realizing what is and what is not. And here's what I mean. So oftentimes, you know, when I, when I was first starting out in my career, again, it was really important for me that I just do and I take action and I do not procrastinate, right? But then there are certain things that I started realizing by studying other people, how they were just getting distracted and they were trying to do too many things simply because they could not say no more often than saying yes. And you probably have seen the, the saying of the average millionaires has seven streams of income. Well, you know what? I don't know the kind of millionaires that you've been hanging around because the kind of millionaires that I've been hanging around only have one stream of income or one major stream of income and then other things that they don't even pay attention to. And the reason why that advice is so cliche and that advice is so out there is simply because people, it, it's harder for people to say no than to say yes. When someone comes up to you and says, hey, there is this new NFT that just launched, or there is this new stock that, you know, I made $10,000 in last week or whatever, you're just going to get so excited and say, okay, I've got $500 in my savings account. I'm going to put it there. And then two months later, this other person comes up to you and says, hey, you know, this new business I, I just started and I'm doing $2,000 a week in profits. I'm like, awesome. I've got an extra $2,000 in my savings account. I'm going to do it. And then all of a sudden, two, three years later, you have all these things that are happening, but none, not one of them is doing anything significant simply because you are all over the place, right? But if you ask yourself, how did I get to that situation? How did I even get to the situation where um, I have all these things going on? Well, that's simply because of your decision process, your decision making process. And that's something that billionaires do that other people simply don't. And you see the concept that I learned from billionaires is that 80% of the ideas and of the input that we receive is garbage and we should just completely push it off. And when I heard that, it really just triggered me immediately because I was like, holy shit, up until now, I've been reactive to every single idea that I get. And to them, it's like, well, when you receive someone, when it, someone comes, you know, when, when, when someone comes up to you and says, you know what, I made $10,000 last month in this crypto, right? That's the only thing that you're receiving. So automatically you're going to react and, and go and take all of your savings and dump it. But then what you don't understand in the context that you're not receiving is, well, what was that crypto? You know, how much was it at? How much did this person invest? What is their background? You know, how did they even get here? Was it, you know, how many times did they try and lose until they make this thing succeed? Um, and, and all the back story, but for you, the only thing that you want to hear is $10,000 last month, I can do the same thing, right? And you probably can, but see, the thing is, you're not understanding everything else behind that. You're not understanding the story behind that. And that's why 80% of the input that we receive is completely garbage. So my decision process looks like this, which is what I learned from my billionaire mentors, is I receive something, I hear something, it's an input from my team, from uh, you know uh, mentors, from books, from whatever, and I immediately think it's a good idea. What I do is I push it off. And this is something that I would highly suggest that you guys take notes on. I completely push it off. And I say, you know what? Nope, I'm just going to push it off. And I'm not even going to write it down. You know, sometimes we, we get very, like, very driven to write things down because we believe it's good. Well, guess what? If it's good, it's going to keep coming back to you. 
So I simply push it off. If it comes back to me two, three days later, I will push it off again. If it comes back to me a week or two weeks later, then it's probably something important because usually if it's not important and you push it off, you're gonna forget it. And this is why we write things down. You know, if you think about that, there's a reason why we write things down because we forget them. But if we forget them, they're probably not even important for us to invest the time in writing them down or even doing them. And if you just do as you listen or as you get input, you're just being reactive. You're not truly deciding and making correct decisions, right? So if two weeks later, after me pushing it off for two, three times, it keeps coming back to me, then it's an idea that's worth investigating. What I'll do is I'll pull a sheet and I will simply write pros and cons, and then I'll keep coming back to it for a week, two, three, four, depends on how major the decision is. Sometimes decisions could be very you know, life-changing. In August of 2021, one of our team, we had a new person enroll in our team, and I had them go through our entire program, and I said, you know what, because we had a 40% drop-off, 40% of the students that were enrolling in BJK University were simply not doing anything, you know? And, and they were not reaching for refunds. They were not, you know, like disputing their transactions, nothing. They were just not taking action. And I just saw that phenomenon and I was like, something needs to change. So someone, enrolled, you know, that we had a new person in our, in our marketing team that said, hey, can you do me a favor? Go through the program. You know nothing about Amazon and just tell me where you get stuck because I want to see if there is like a bottleneck. I want to fix it. And he went through and he was like, you know, the product research criteria is amazing, but it's very complicated and I'm getting very confused and very frustrated and I've spent 10 hours locating a product and I simply cannot find a product. And then over the next two months, we started working together to come up with a new criteria. And since October until January, we were simply testing that criteria and going over and fixing it and changing it. And then finally in January, we redid our entire product research module and then we shipped it out to the students. So for five months, we were simply deciding whether or not this new criteria is better than the old one and testing it simply because for the last three years, we've been teaching our students this way, right? So then we realized that any decision, especially if it's very, you know, if it's going to dramatically impact a, a segment of your life or a segment of your business or whatever, it needs to be thought of first, right? And for a long time. So then you open your pros and cons and then you keep coming back to it every single week. And then every time you think of something, you pull up your sheet and then you add pros and you add cons and you add pros and you add cons. And then after a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of months of doing this, you're gonna look at your sheet and say, first, does the idea still sound as good as it did two, three months ago when I first thought about it? Number two, do the pros outweigh the cons? And if so, then it's a good idea. Then you want to go on and start looking into how to implement it. Where in scenario A of person coming to us and saying, I made $10,000 last month in crypto, us immediately interacting or reacting, right? Being reactive. And that's the thing you don't want to become is you do not want to become reactive to ideas. You do not want to become reactive to new things. As soon as you hear them, boom, you go out there and then you start doing. Because this is when you get two, three years later, you're going to see that you are involved in 15 different things and you're half-assing all of them and you're not great at one single one of them. And that's the thing that you do not want to do. Outside of that, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Again, if you did, smash the thumbs up button. If you're not subscribed yet, please do me a favor and do so. I will see you in the next video. Take care.